the whole Christian basis of Christ being God incarnate, of God coming to us, to teach us, can be summed in one succinct sentence. Who can teach man about God better than God as man? No one. Some people may argue, but God can't do this and God has these this and God can do that, which we say is putting limits on God, but you cannot put a limitation on God. God will do whatever he so feels like doing so long as it doesn't contradict his essence. And does it contradict God does it contradict God's essence to come to the earth as he is outside the universe? Well, why would that be? Everything in this universe is a manifestation of his will and his creation. So if we taint or destroy anything in this universe, it's to uh, impact the creator, so to speak. So it makes no difference. The product, in other words, is equal to the maker. So you kill another human, you're... It's like you're offending God himself. So whether it's God here or someone else, both are products of the same thing. And we're only starting to understand that now in our place in this infinite universe, this great universe. Well, infinite in that whatever isn't, whatever has given rise to it keep, will keep on going and going and going. So now, on the basis of who can teach man about God better than God as man, all, well, put it to you this way, there's an infinite realm outside our existence, an infinite realm that has given rise to this universe, has potentially given rise to many other universes that we cannot comprehend or have no understanding of. What's likely to be the case scientifically is that there are numerous branches of universes that shoot off something that goes on forever and ever outside all of those universes, outside the tangible. Now, what Christians say happened is that that infinite realm. Okay, so let me rephrase who can teach man about God better than God as man. So, with man, man understands things as a man, as a human. So, this infinite greatness, this infinite realm outside our universe has manifested into our universe in time, has become incarnate without ceasing to be that which it is, he is, etc., outside the universe. So it coming into this time space doesn't mean that it ceased to exist outside that time space, that anything changed. It simply entered this time space and said, ta-da, here I am. That's the magic of the incarnation. Okay? It, it, God didn't stop. God didn't have a break. He didn't get his uh, Bundy card and, yeah, I'm off to earth now. He just, this is the time that it was always going to happen. And he came here. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to uh, go for the uh, bleeding heart, you know, cock tugging version of Christianity where everybody's touching each other's hearts and, eh, that's rather, uh, it's a rather fairy tale anglican like contraption of christianity it doesn't exist god didn't come here to you know have love affairs and do all this fucking bleeding heart pouring god is love it's true his pure essence is love but the english don't understand the proper definition of love in terms of what god is absolutely not not from not the anglicans at least perhaps the catholic scholars they do but the concept of love for God is a pure love. It's it's not something that's got to do with romanticism, flowers, or anything like that. It's like a passionate love. It's a 
It's a love that does things. It's, a, it's an active love. It's pure love. And uh, what God came here to, do, to, to show us was this is how you live. This is what you do. These are, this is the way. And he did that. He was most persuasive in that. That's, that's the reason that Christ can be regarded as exactly what he said, God incarnate. Because he did everything he said he'd do. He taught people things they had never thought of or couldn't even imagine. He transcended human limits in being restricted to uh, a culture at any given time. He was his own culture, which makes no sense because no other human has ever done that before. Since, he, he had knowledge that was not here. And he gave that to us. And not only did he give that to us, it ended the Roman Empire. Nothing could end Rome. He ended the Roman Empire with nothing more than 12 silly men uh, by, by the standards of those days. Uneducated men with fishing rods and a battle donkey. A donkey that was the version of the battle donkey. Well, the Romans had horses and, you know, the fucking ballista and all sorts of fucking high-tech equipment that was actually high-tech. They could actually put up a good fight even today. Uh... So, Christ beat that all. And his armament, was, in his inventory of war-fighting capabilities, was a 12 fishermen and a battle donkey, who he rode through Jerusalem with some palm leaves being thrown at him. That was his warfare. And he took the whole world. He took the entire world. And he took it with his teaching. He knew that it would reverberate, because it was so potent. Okay, the people who heard it knew that, shit, this is a weapon. This is more effective than anything these Pharisees are doing to us. This is, this must be the word of God. What in God's name? This has to be the Messiah that we all promised. And God has a funny way of doing things. That's why you can't put limitations on God. You can't question God. If God said he was going to come to earth, and he was going to do this, he was going to do that, well, that's exactly what he was going to do. And that's exactly what it seems, not what it seems to have done, that's exactly what happened. So, who can teach man about God better than God is man? No one. That's the entire Christian religion. So, God didn't step off his throne. He didn't cease to exist. He just, it was like a, it was like a cloning process, but in time, okay, here is my essence. It's going into the Virgin Mary, and I am entering this world and I'm going to see what it's all about. And he, <laughs> he did more than that. He ended a Roman Empire. He ended the status quo of the Pharisees. He started the Christian religion. He is the reason for high enlightened thinking. Uh, Christ is the reason for that. Otherwise, we'd still be barbaric Europeans fighting each other. Uh, he changed the world. And he did so with nothing more than a few apostles and a donkey. And then you go, and then you think of this from the Christian viewpoint. You go to Paul's letter, Paul's letters, and he says explicitly God's utmost stupidity. It's not to say God's stupid, but it's just to say his his utmost stupidity. That the worst that could come from him, his the the, the most humble he could be, is still still a, infinitely more powerful than what us humans can do. And then you look at Jesus Christ, and you just think about it. Oh my holy God, how did the earth miss that? How did people question his divinity? He absolutely annihilated the world through pure love, through reason, through teaching. And that's when you, that's, you see it unblemished in the Holy Gospels. The Holy Gospels today are the Holy Gospels that were there then. They, they have not changed. There's no such thing. Okay, don't, don't buy the cheap story of... Oh, you look at that and look at that. It's, it's different translations. Fucking Al-Madonna. There's actually nothing more consistent uh, than the Holy Gospels of all uh, scholarly writing in human history. The Gospels are that consistent. There's no blemish in them. Okay, you've got more of a reason to doubt the uh, scripts of other religions, without naming who, because of how... The scripts were handled and what went on 
but I'm not going to go into that. So don't buy that. From the from the actual scientific and historical viewpoint, not the not the Christian or religious viewpoint, the Holy Gospels are the most reliable letters, the most reliable words the world has ever seen. And uh, you just have to read them and understand them. Keep reading them. Keep understanding them, and it'll hit you in the head. And then you start to think, how in God's good name did this man know that at that time? With these people and how the hell did those people accomplish all that yeah, that's a touch that's more than a touch of man that's god almighty and uh did god almighty beat death i believe he did i believe he did there, even the uh scientific uh analysis of things like the shroud of turin is very controversial nothing conclusive yet but it's this some things on it that sort of say hold on a second this could actually be it because of the way it's imprint uh, the way a photographic negative is imprinted reverse as if you know, a lot of light or something shown so it is. and that's actually consistent with what the roman soldiers would have seen and why they would have been completely shitting themselves selves at uh, christ's resurrection because uh, it would have been like a nuclear bomb going off in a cave and he resurrected every light from his every bit of his body just shown and imprinted that shrouded you're in photographically negatively but that's that's another story for another day the point is without going into the resurrection without going into anything the meaning of christ is summed in who can teach man about god better than god is man no one it's the ultimate it is the ultimate that's the christian basis of Christ that's the Christian basis of their religion that God came down to us to say no 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 guys you're doing it all wrong this is how you do it and it's exactly how we do it 